Okay, Bear Hawkers, we're back, and we've uh, we have used our tooling we've talked about so far to flange our rib to this configuration. We we flanged it over on the form blocks. We fluted it with the fluting pliers, um, and we we've got it to this point right here. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to put the flange on these lightning holes. And the reason we're doing all this for those who don't know, is that these flanges, these flanges, even the flutes, they all because of the because of the shape that they're that they are in the metal, it's giving this 25 thousandths piece of aluminum a lot of strength. I could take a I could take a regular piece and fold it right over, but this piece I can't. All of these machined in angles and not machined in but formed in angles provide strength. So I'm taking a relatively lightweight part and in increasing its strength, you know, tenfold or more by doing this process. So the last process we need to do to this rib prior to riveting on our vertical stiffener is to flute, excuse me, to flange the lightning holes. So gotta make more tools. Yay, more tools. So First thing we needed to do was make these form blocks here that I have to hold the ribbon position. So that's the bottom one. And basically this is a 1 8 reduced rib. So because, keep in mind, I fluted this now. So these little flutes take up some material. So I have to reduce the width here so, so this will fit in between. And it's not critical because I'm not using this to form anything. So basically I just, you know, took my pencil and drew about a quarter inch all the way around and I just trimmed it off. And then once one was done and sanded up, then making a second one is easy with the laminate trimmer. We've been talking about that. So once you do that, then I transfer the tooling holes off the master rib so I know where these lightning holes are going to be. Again, everything off the master rib, using these tooling holes here to hold everything in the same position. Everything is referenced off these two holes. Everything lines up in the same spot, time after time after time. Massive repeatability. This is how they make full-scale airplanes. Same way I'm doing it here. Their tooling might be made out of you know, solid steel so they can make 10 zillion parts out of it, but the, pr the principle is identical. So, all right. So once I have my holes, my center holes for my lightning hole locations. Then I took my fly cutter and on this piece here I cut the hole out the same size as the hole in the original blank that I used to cut this piece right here. As a matter of fact I actually just kind of told you a little bit of a story. I didn't, I didn't take my fly cutter. Basically I located the holes on this one and I drilled a pilot hole and I just took this, put it like that on here, took it to the router table and I used this hole and this hole to create this hole and this hole, which are exactly dimensionally the same as the blank. Then I took on my router, and I can't show you the bit because it's in the router, but on my router table I put my 45 degree bit in there and then I cut this 45 degree chamfered angle right here. You can see it all the way around. Good, good, you see it. Then I had to make this block, second half of the tooling, because we're going to form a sandwich. Thing is, is that with this block, I wanted this hole to be three quarters of an inch larger than the, than the actual lightning hole because that three quarters of an inch means I've got a three eighths of an inch all the way around to bend over for my flange. So if you look at this, if I line them up pretty close there on the light on the holes, you can now see that there's three eighths of an inch or so all the way around of material sticking out in the breeze there, unsupported. And as luck would have it, you'll notice that the beveled edge here also is 
three eighths of an inch or three quarters. And if you set these on top of each other, the beveled edge, the top of the beveled edge, lines up with the very edge of the form. So what we do is we take this piece, it's all fluted up like so, and you put it in there like that, then you put this piece on top and you put your, your tooling pins, well your tooling pins would already be in there. Here's one, Let's see if I got another one laying here, I do. So you put it on there like that, you slap this on here like so. Then you put on your wing nuts and lock this down and I put a clamp right here too. Use just a C clamp right here to help hold all this and stabilize it. And now we're, we've got the rib in the flanging form. And we're ready to flange these holes. So how do we do that? Well, we have to make yet more tools. And those tools are flanging dies. These guys right here. And all these are are one inch pieces of MDF, one inch piece of MDF with a quarter inch piece of ply laminated on top and a three uh, one eighth inch piece of ply laminated in between the two MDF pieces. And the reason I did that was is that I'm going to be putting 20 tons of force down on this on my press, and I'll have to take the camera over and show you the press. 20 tons of force down on it with with the press, and if I was just to press on this you know, particle board MDF crap, it would just crack and break and come apart. But with these plywood pieces, it stabilizes the whole assembly. And I've done now 25 or 30 of them with this, and there's no signs of wear whatsoever. So once I've made this, and, and as luck would have it, this piece, this diameter here, fits this hole, perf well not perfectly, there's some relief because it's got to move, but basically fits this hole. What I did is I took my router bit and I 45 this. So now I have a 45 degree depression inside and I've got a 45 degree plug to push. And what's going to happen is this whole assembly goes into a press. This piece goes in here. This backer plate goes up on here like this. The press pushes on this and it pushes this whole assembly down in there. And when it gets all the way bottomed out, I relieve it and Remember earlier we talked about spring back. This won't stay at a 45. It's going to spring back and it springs back to about a 33 or 34 degree angle. Forms a perfect uh, um, flanged edge on the lightning hole. And we do that for each one of these. So there's a flanging die in the hole and we're flanged. Okay, so we're going to go over to the press now and I'm going to press one out and you guys can see me do that. 